This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another MIDI Composer 101 tutorial and in this lesson let's talk about project creation. Project creation inside a MIDI Composer is crucial. Now I know you're probably thinking, well Kevin, pretty much inside of any nonlinear editing application, you know, setting up your projects is important. In this case it's a little bit different because of the way that MIDI Composer is set up. Once you choose a format to work in, you're essentially locked to that format. So it's important to take into account, you know, how much footage do I have of one format versus another? So which project setup do I want? What really is the end product that I want to get to? Is it 1080i? Is it 720p? Is it 1080p 23976? These are all important things that you're going to need to consider when you're setting up your project. You're going to want to set it up right the first time so that there's no confusion down the road. Okay. Short introduction here, let me just command tab into Avid Media Composer and let's get started. And as you can see, as soon as I command tab in, we're greeted by the project selection window. Now things work a little bit differently in Media Composer than you might be accustomed to, especially if you're coming from an application like Final Cut Pro 7. Now inside a Media Composer, when you launch the application, you'll always be greeted by this window, but what's important to keep in mind is that if you have, you know, 5, 10, 20 editors, all working on one station, they can all have different unique user profiles that you'll find right up here at the top. It's a little bit different from anyone coming from Final Cut Pro 7. In Final Cut Pro 7, in most cases, how you know I've seen post places have it set up, is they would have a different system login for each user. I know that you can get in and export keyboard settings, but in most cases, the easiest way to have multiple users would be to have multiple system logins. Don't need that inside a Media Composer. You can have one system login, and then you can have 20 different editors with 20 different user profiles all set up right here that they can easily switch back and forth between. Very, very handy to have. And I do encourage you, if you're working at a place with multiple editors, don't just have one user setting. Give each editor their own so they can get in and tailor their settings however they want. Now we're going to talk more about settings in a later tutorial, but like I said, keep that in mind. Every editor gets a user profile. Okay, let's move on and let's talk a little bit about what we see next right here. We have these three uh, buttons here. We have private, we have shared, and we have external. And mine's set to external. Now what exactly do these buttons represent? Well, these buttons basically represent your project location. Now, if I switch back to what the default would actually be, the default is normally private. If you're launching Media Composer for the first time, it's gonna come up and say private. Now, you'll see that because I am working on a Mac, now it's gonna be similar for Windows. You'll see that with private, where the project is gonna to go to is into the users, Kevin P. McAuliffe, Documents, Avid Projects folder. Now, why is that called private? Well, because it's going into the Kevin P. McAuliffe folder in the users folder, I'm the only person that's gonna see anything that's in that folder, meaning that if somebody else logs into the system on their own login, not gonna see the project. That's not very helpful. What you can also do is set things up as a shared project, basically meaning that anybody that logs into the system will be able to see the projects. But for me, how I always work is with external. And in most cases, this is probably how you're gonna work as well. In this case, I have all my projects going to a separate external hard drive. You'll see that if I open a new window and show the contents of my Mac drive, which is my external hard drive, you'll see that I have a folder right here called appropriately enough Avid Projects. And you'll see that if I just drag the window over a little bit here, you'll see that all the projects in the folder represent the projects in my project selection window. So this is basically where I've told Media Composer to send all these projects. Now, why am I doing that? Well, you know what, sometimes I get a call from a client saying, hey, can you, you know, bring your stuff, you know, and edit at my location today? Well, you know what, no problem. I've got it all on an external drive. I basically unplug it, take it with me, plug it in there, and guess what? All my projects, all my media come up because they're all located on that one central drive. Now, I do want to point out, I mean, anyone that's coming into Media Composer at version 8.2, this is this window is going to sort of be the norm, but anybody coming from a previous version of Media Composer, this window is going to look a little bit different because in 8.2, the 8.2 update, we actually got a little bit of a different project selection window with the addition of some new information that we can now see when we click on different projects. You'll see here, in this case, I had bars and tone called appropriately enough 1080i, 
but I really didn't need to call it that because once I select it, I'd be able to see over here what the project type is, the video color space, the raster dimension, and whether the project is stereoscopic or not. A great new addition just to give you a little bit more information about all of the different projects you might have inside of the project selection window. Now, let's create a new project. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that unlike applications like Premiere and like Final Cut, when you create a new project inside of Media Composer, essentially, you are locked to that format. You really can't change it. Now, I sort of say that, and I'm just gonna sort of put, you know, in quotes, with a little bit of an exception. But for the most part, what you're actually setting by setting the project up is how you want to export your final finished product. Now, what's gonna happen is that if you choose, for example, a project that's 1080i, you are going to more or less be forced to work in a 1920 by 1080, 2997 or 5994 field project and everything that you drop into that timeline, no matter what the frame rate, is going to be conformed to that because at the end of the day, you might want to be exporting a 1080i project. So Media Composer is going to make sure you stay on track to get that. Now, most people might say, oh, Kev, I like working in Premiere. I like working in Final Cut. I like doing what I like to do. I like to, you know, edit my own way. I don't like to be told what to do. Trust me, you know, editors that work in Media Composer like that because do you know what? At the end of the day, no matter what happens, you know that when you click export, that final project is going to be 1080i or you know 1080p 23976. It's going to be whatever you set the project to, so that way there's never any confusion at what the end product is going to be. Now I did say sort of quote unquote, you know, with a little bit of an exception that I'm going to talk about in just a second. But let's create a new project. And we can do that by simply clicking on the new project button. And once we've clicked it, we're now greeted with a new window, the new project window. Now we need to give this project a name. So let's call it appropriately enough, Media Composer 101. Okay, now we need to choose a format. Now for our format, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose 1080p 23976 right here. Now in most cases, everything else, obviously depending on, you know, there might be specific workflows, but for the most part, really everything else can be left on its default. You might wanna get in and adjust the color space if necessary. But in most cases, the only other thing that you might need to adjust is the raster dimension. Now in this case, you'll see I only have two options. What I'm gonna do just for a second here is I'm just gonna to switch to 1080i because I wanna show you that in 1080i under raster dimensions, if I drop that down, we have 1920 by 1080, 1440 by 1080, and 1280 by 1080. Now what do these three represent? Well, this represents True HD square pixel 1920 by 1080, 1080i we're gonna call it. The next option down here, 1440 by 1080, represents HDV. And last but certainly not least, we have 1280 by 1080, which represents DVC Pro HD. So depending on the raster type that you're using, in most cases would be 1920 by 1080, but depending on the raster type that you wanna use, you can get in and set it right here. But this is also adjustable after you create the project. Okay, so like I said, in most cases, unless you need to do stereoscopic work, you're gonna leave everything in here on its defaults, and all you're gonna do is simply say, okay, and what's gonna happen is that new project's gonna be created right here in the Select Project window, and you'll see that we now have the additional information on it right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to open the project by simply clicking on okay, And once the project opens, it will always create me a new bin by default and open it for me. I'm just gonna close that. Because I did say that sort of, you know, quote unquote, that there's a bit of an exception as to creating a new project. Now, I think I just went and created a project that was 1080i and I did. Now I'm gonna change that for future tutorials because we wanna work in progressive, but it's actually okay that I selected this because I do wanna show you, because I did say sort of quote unquote, that there's a little bit of an exception as far as changing the format that you're working in. Now, the only change that you can make to the format that you're working in is you can choose a like frame rate. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm gonna come over to the project type right here. I'm gonna drop it down. You'll see that I can work in 1080i 5994, which is 5994 fields, which represents 2997 frames per second. I can work in 1080p 2997, 720p 2997, or 30i standard definition, which is 
2997. If I happen to be working in you know 1080p 2398, I'd have the 720p 2398 and the standard definition uh, 2398 frame rates to work in. But you'll see I can't you know for example take the 1080i project and switch it to a 1080p 23976 project doesn't work like that. Once you've created that project, you are locked to it. You'll see, like I said, I also have the ability to get in and adjust the raster dimensions from in here as well, as well as the color space. You do have those options, but really as far as the actual main format goes, you're pretty much stuck if you've chosen 1080i to be working in a 1080i project. Now, like I said, you know, for the next lesson, I'm going to change the project to be 23976 because that's pretty much the format or the frame rate that all of the footage that I'm going to be working with is in. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up our look at creating a project inside of Media Composer. Like I said, what's the most important thing to keep in mind is what is the end result? What is the end format you want to be going to? If you think about that, Media Composer is going to set your project up and make sure that you stick with that all the way right from the start to the end of your edit. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail. Dot com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.